Hey, I wanted to show you my, my bigger dome. This is a little over 1,200 square feet. Uh, this was constructed using the Good Karma method. It's a three frequency dome. Um, the, the legs on those triangle members are about eight feet long. And then I put uh, triangles in the middle of them to reinforce it. So it is a three frequency, even though it looks like a four frequency. Uh, one thing I'd point out here, I did have goats that I stored in here uh, for a winter. And they kind of decided they liked the insulation and the tinfoil. So it used to really be pretty, but they beat it up a little bit. Um, a couple neat lessons learned here. Uh, one, you don't use wood on a greenhouse. It's just not a smart solution. It started rotting right away. And what I observed is that um, the water in the wintertime, it would, you know, evaporate. It hit the cold glazing surface. It would freeze on that surface uh, in the evening, and then it would roll down in the morning when it, when it melted. And that process of that cycle happening every single day, well, it degraded the wood really fast. So what I had to do is I treated all the wood with some Cabot stain, and I'll probably have to do that routinely, but I'm just concerned because of that, uh, the rot aspect. I hadn't thought of that. There's some really neat concepts associated with a greenhouse that you know were, were introduced for this construction build. Um, underneath this gravel here, about 12 to 18 inches, uh, put down a, a few layers of, um, of plastic, we use silage tarps. And that plastic captures all the water, so there really is no water waste. So what happens is when we water this greenhouse, and if it does go on the ground, um, it'll just funnel into a cistern in the middle of this greenhouse. And the other thing that was done that's kind of slick is underneath these grow beds. So if you had a grow bed here, that runs the entire perimeter of the structure, as well as grow beds here in the middle. So these grow head beds in the middle here Underneath the soil, uh, put carpet over four-inch sewer lines. And the carpet filters out all the dirt, but the sewer lines capture all the water. So the combination of the sewer lines and that plastic captures almost all the water used in this facility. And it all drains into a central cistern right here. So this cistern here, what that does is it acts actually right now as a mushroom bed. But um, if I ever wanted to seal that, I could collect all the water and pump it up if we ever have a drought or a serious uh, situation where water recovery is necessary. Another neat solution here that people don't often think about are grow beds. How do you build them? I've seen a lot of people use just standard concrete and a lot of people use wood. I, I personally just don't think wood's a smart solution for grow beds. It's just they rot too fast. And if you use the pressure treated or even creosote treated wood, man, you got leachate going into the stuff you're eating. Um, I don't know what the science is on it. I haven't, I haven't looked too closely at it, but it just doesn't make sense to me. So what I did for these grow beds is I used soil cement. And what soil cement is, is it's, you know, normally uh, your concrete's a mixture of about one part um, cement and, you know, five, five, six parts other stuff. So I think it's about five parts other stuff. In this case, this is one part Portland cement and about 11 parts other stuff. So it's, it's the same concept, it's just a lot weaker. There's a lot less Portland cement, but you don't need concrete level strength for grow beds. You just need something that's gonna, you know, retain their, uh, you know, not, not crush and break in the extreme colds. And because you're in a greenhouse, you don't have extreme cold, extreme thermal cycles. So it really doesn't matter as much. So it works out pretty good. So here, um, we've tried lots of different iterations. We did put horse manure down last summer uh, across all our beds. Um, and, you know, it was, it was semi-compost. It was about 10-year-old horse manure, but it hadn't been turned. But um, we laid uh, the um, plastic on top of it to act as a weed mat. And we got the plastic for free. It seems to work pretty good. Um, one reason that we insulated the north side is because in the wintertime, there's simply you know, there's no energy coming from the north side. So we took four inches of polyisocyanurate insulation and used that here. And we bought those as seconds. So we got them pretty cheap. I think it was like seven cents a board foot or something crazy like that, really cheap. But the tin foil, what that does is it reflects your infrared energy back in. So you don't really have um, the heat capacity. There's, there's not a lot of mass in the insulation anyway, but you're not gonna have as much heat transfer through the insulation by using the uh, tin foil as you'd otherwise have. Um, the watering mechanism here, I've gone through a few iterations. Initially, we set things up for flood irrigation. 
Flood seems to be optimal uh, in terms of saturating your soil. But I found that was just challenging. It just took a long time to flood. There was a lot of leaks and just a lot of hassles. So what I did is I ended up taking these one-inch lines that you see throughout here and just pierce those one-inch uh, one lines with one sixteenth-inch drills. What that does is it allows the water to be distributed throughout these locations. It seems to work pretty good. The other thing that happens is because the water may not hit every hole where the corn in this case is growing, it does go through and then when it cools down or warms up, that thermal cycling causes evaporation of the soil and that evaporation then is spread out by that plastic. So it's, it's able to do a, a good job even though um, delivery is not perfect. Uh, it seems to work out pretty good. Uh, so, so far, this has been a neat structure. Uh, thermally, this is uh, the best performing structure I have. Um, seems to work well. And if I sh shut all the ga gates and don't have extremely long periods of, of no sun in the wintertime, but if I shut all the vents and the doors and things like that, it'll stay above freezing year-round. Uh, and we're in a, a zone 4B climate, so it's an intensely cold location here. So I like this. I think you can come up with better designs. Um, more thermally efficient designs, but for the price, this is about $6 a square foot is what it cost me to build. Um, and, and that's complete. That's with the, you know, the, the raised beds and the water system and everything. It's about $6 a square foot. So if you're smart about it, there's ways to do it smart. Uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money to make it happen. Hey, um, have a good one. Thank you. Have a good day.